Well, artificial intelligence is uh, shaping how we live, work or do business uh, across the world. In fact, to talk more about how technology is actually ruling life of most Indians, I am joined by Mr. Puneet Chandok, uh, who is the president of Microsoft India and South Asia. Puneet, thank you so much for joining us on Business Today, India Today group. Thank you for having this conversation. Such a pleasure to meet you again. Let me begin by asking you, how has AI been influencing India's economic growth? I think AI is a massive force multiplier for India. Um, and I'll give you just three examples of this. Uh, just as Microsoft, we're committed to building AI for India. So we're investing $3 billion over two years in AI infrastructure and cloud infrastructure. We're training 10 million people in the country, 2.4 million already trained. But a lot of investments coming into the country, both in terms of infrastructure and also training and really getting the employee, the workforce ready for AI. I think that's the first one. Mm -hmm. Second, I think uh, Indian enterprises are becoming what we're calling frontier firms. And we spoke about this part of the work trend index report. Frontier firms are the firms that are putting AI at the center of their operations, thinking about AI as a way to drive value. And we're seeing lots of companies in India pretty much across every sector. Manufacturing, we spoke about LNT, IT services, we spoke about Cognizant, healthcare, we spoke about Apollo building co-pilots for doctors, financial services, Access Bank, Bajaj Finance, really thinking about call center automation. But businesses across every industry, every function, reinventing with AI, becoming more productive, more efficient, driving more top line and and profitability. And then finally, I think the Indian workforce getting ready. I think Microsoft is, and we're excited about this, which is as Microsoft can we make India's AI, India's workforce AI ready. Uh, and with all the skilling that's going on, all the work that we're doing, can we really use India's demographic, demographic advantage on the AI side and truly leapfrog and lead the world on AI? Okay. You did talk about skilling in the, in the beginning yeah. of your response. Uh, uh, has there been a challenge in trying to adapt a millennial or say a youngster to um, AI driven jobs uh, on the skilling front? Actually not because I think if you look at millennials and uh, the young workforce young force that's coming together, they're actually a lot more AI native than you and I. Mm -hmm. um, and in fact, they're coming with lots of interesting expectations, right? One, they want technology which is intuitive, which is collaborative, which is inclusive which is 24 by seven, which is always working for them versus the other way around. Second, I think they're all very excited about the new roles that AI is creating. And that's something which I'm very excited about. Like we have roles today at Microsoft and across India that didn't exist 12 months ago. We have an AI orchestrator role. We have an agent workflow manager role. We have an agent boss. We have a prompt engineer. We've got many of these new roles coming up. And I think the new generation is super excited about this. And then finally, I think this new generation is also really excited about skilling because I think the barrier to learning and the growth mindset, as we call it in Microsoft, I see young people bringing a lot more growth mindset to AI, learning every day how to build these tools, how to build agents, how to get them to work for them. And I think that's something that we're all very excited about. Okay. Um, Puneet, Microsoft uh, recently had said that they were able to save uh, a good uh, amount, say about close to $500 million via AI. Um, is this a smooth transition of organizations and companies to be able to replace the human workforce with AI? Of course, completely it cannot be done. So I think, uh, by the way, at Microsoft, we're drinking our own Kool-Aid. So we're building the, the, the most compelling AI stack in the world, but we're also deploying AI within Microsoft. And I'll give you a few examples. Within sales, all, my, all our salespeople who are using co-pilots and AI are creating 9.3% more revenue, right? So imagine the impact of this. I think you spoke about $500 million of savings. A lot of that came from customer service and we spent a lot of money there. And it came from faster turnaround. It, didn't, it, it wasn't about employees being taken out. It was about how do we turn around customer queries even faster? So 12% faster rate on every customer query that we were getting. So that allowed us to save a lot more money. And then across every function in Microsoft, marketing, we're seeing 21.5% faster conversion. IT and technical support, we're seeing terrific examples, finance, legal, HR. Across the board, we're seeing massive uplift and value coming out of AI. How do you ensure the credibility is maintained via the use of AI? This morning, while you were addressing us, you also spoke about how most of your coding is now done by AI. Um, is there a challenge of, say, false database or, or anything that kind of is not on the factual terms? I would say a few things. First, uh, I spoke about a third of our code in the last year for new products being written by GitHub Copilot and we're shipping more products in the last one year than the last five years combined. That's something that we're very excited about. 
but we also have always have the human in the loop right so every time code is generated code is reviewed by humans and it's a little bit of this interplay between humans and machines now which is playing out so i think that's the first thing mm -hmm. second karishma when you're building technology that can change the world you have to build it responsibly it can't be an afterthought right this is something that you build into your products and services and by the way that's one thing that differentiates microsoft if you if you look at our ai stack our copilot our copilot studio our azure ai foundry this is enterprise grade security enterprise grade guardrails privacy the the business's data the company's data sits with them they own their data making sure all the safeguards are built in right so building it responsibly making sure there's a human in the loop and then constantly innovating and building new products is something that we're working on okay you did talk about responsible ai and i want to plug this in with sovereign ai now um puneet tell me does india do you think have the appetite to build its own in house uh, um ai but keeping in mind that it's also responsible reliable and uh, in compliance with our current infrastructure i would say absolutely so if you look at the india ai mission and that's something we're very excited about and we're working very closely with the government on that as well but i think it's a terrific initiative initiated by the government to bring the right infrastructure in the hands of researchers and students and colleges in india and get the right gpus to them uh, build our own local language models Uh, get the startup ecosystem on AI fired up, and we're we're playing a fairly big role. We're working with SaaS Boomi to focus on 5,000 startups and get them AI ready. So, one, I think, just from a government perspective, I think the AI mission and and, and the regulation yeah. and that is just a terrific initiative. Uh, I do think there's a lot of innovation that needs to happen in India. It's happening. As Microsoft, we are a multinational company, but we are as Indian as anybody else. We've been here for 30 plus years. we're building infrastructure i spoke about the 3 billion dollars of investment to build ai infrastructure for india to serve indian customers skill 10 million people in india so i think bringing all of this together i think there's a lot of innovation that's yet to happen it'll happen both from global multinationals and also local startups in india that are building for india yeah india ai mission definitely is uh, is something that the government has been very keen on and it's going to take a longer time than given but also the fact that we are focusing on it already but government uh, just a while ago say a couple of months back had also alerted that uh, the use of ai especially when it comes to policy making has been challenging because uh, one it it's also about privacy and secrecy now these challenges how how do you think should be looked upon when we come to a diverse market like india so again i think uh, some of the and by the way these are all genuine concerns privacy safeguarding data removing biases in the systems making sure these products reflect the reality of india and for that i think as i said right which is for us responsible ai is not an afterthought it's built into our products and services and i'll give you a few things one all our teams that are building these products and by the way a lot of these products are being built in india which is fantastic are very diverse teams they reflect uh, they reflect india in all its diversity so make sure that these products have that that flavor if you will second i think we have a secure future initiative that we're driving to make sure that all our products are safeguarded we've got transparency principles uh, and responsible ai principles that we're building across all our products again making sure that customers own their data all the enterprise grade security is built in responsible ai is built in every time a company or an employee uses the tool all of this is stuff that we are super focused on working on and as we constantly innovate and build the next generation of products and services we'll make it make sure that we get even better at this every day it's the need of the hour yeah um, i know this is very rhetorical in nature but are we actually marching towards or aiming at fully replacing human workforce with ai absolutely not i think ai will augment you and i karishma it will it will augment so it's augmenting me right now it's helping me draft better emails it's synthesizing my documents getting me prepared for meetings um giving me feedback on what i'm doing coaching me uh, taking all the grunt work a out co a copilot right and agents are now doing a lot of work for my office right all my meetings get planned very quickly so i think it is augmenting human capability it's it, it's not outsourcing cognitive thinking it's actually augmenting this and taking the grunt work out and getting you to focus on stuff that really matters for the business for our customers for our colleagues for the country i think that is something that i'm excited about Yeah but the copilot can crash the plane you know if it's not uh, uh, synced in and lined in because there is a clear gap of personal touch uh, and that is a challenge that's why we call it the copilot not the pilot right because the human is the pilot and the human is always in the loop karishma and, and i think going back to this new world where agents will become digital colleagues intelligence will be on tap each of us will be agent bosses right i will have a series of agents working for me and you'll have a series of agents working for them one agent might do a research for this interview one agent might do a copy and write the article for or do the video of synthesizing after the interview all of this will have you in the loop as a human 
But all of this will give you so much time back to focus on five more interesting interviews and seven more interesting questions to ask. I think that is the beauty of it. Okay. Puneet, I want to address this. There was a report by Microsoft Research Division that was just recently released which spoke about 40 jobs in danger due to AI. And well, it's funny enough, but my job is also in danger <laughs> for that. Uh, even India's economic survey that was released early this year, it spoke about how um, there there is a lopsided approach to this. Um, how do you think things will pan out? Because we are a country that's also very focused on getting jobs and employment. And now, do you think the shift has to be from normal skilling to AI skilling to be able to adapt? Absolutely. And I'll say three things quickly, right? First, tons of new roles and jobs to be created, which we should all be excited about. And we spoke about AI orchestrator and agent workflow managers and so on and so forth, right? And they require new skills and they require new jobs, right? Second, the color of our jobs will change, Karishma. Your job and my job will change in terms of really focusing on stuff that's value adding and how do we kind of upgrade and upskill our people. And that's where skilling is super important, right? And I spend an hour every day learning and, and all of us do, and that's not enough. You have to learn even more on this technology. And then finally, organizations have to become even more agile on how do we readjust the workforce, invest in areas where there's more growth and demand and skills required, constantly reskill the workforce, constantly shift the workforce. So a lot more agility in terms of companies operating, right? The days of old organization charts will change. You'll have work charts. You want to get some work done as a company, as a business, as an individual, and you'll have a series of people and agents coming together and doing it. So I think that's the world that we are looking forward to. Okay, as we come to the end of this interview, Puneet, I quickly have to ask you this one question. You've, you've spoken about jobs, you've spoken about uh, employment, but uh, uh, the headwind to this is the fact that a lot of tech giants have been going ahead with layoffs in order to also save costs, but also use more and more optimal utilization of AI. How's Microsoft India placed on this? India is one of the most exciting markets for Microsoft and for anybody in technology and AI today to build, right? The demographic, demographic dividend, the digital infrastructure that we have in this country, the progressive reforms and the AI mission, everything that we spoke about, the startup ecosystem. So it's, it, it's the most exciting market for anybody today to build technology and AI. It's the same for Microsoft. It's a strategic market. It's a market that we're all excited about. It's a market that we're investing a lot more, Karishma, spoke, speaking about the $3 billion, the training, the upskilling, all the work we're doing with Indian enterprises and government. So I think we continue to say, stay invested in India, committed to India, in fact, even more committed than ever, and build in India for the world. And there's a lot of innovation that we're doing in India in, across healthcare, education, agriculture, that we're not taking to the world. So that's something that we are all super excited about. Thank you very much, Puneet, for joining us on this chat and wishing you all the luck. Thank you. Uh, I'd say the man on mission on AI. Thank you. We're all on the mission. Thank you, Karishman. Thank, Thank you. you for doing it. If you like the video, do like, comment, share and subscribe.